We can see that NFTs are really important right now. There are lots of people who are interested in these platforms, and we have more and more cases when we talk about great sums. Today we'll talk about legal aspects, and we will dispel numerous myths. Please welcome our speakers, Vladislav Kisberg, he is a CEO of Block Party. Then we have Alex Fallin from Rival. We have Brick Spacers, he is a digital artist. Maxim Derman from Arca. We have also Gerbert Shopnik, he is a founder of Digital Art Expo. We have Darya Chinozub, she is the head of Innovation Department from Gazprom Bank. We have Christina Kim from Bakar Art Galleries. And also Irena Zareev, he is the founder of Kadaf. It is an exhibition for modern and crypto exhibition. Uh, your micro. All right. Now I see. I see myself twice for some reason, but I guess that's fine. <laughs> well, that's good. hi, everyone. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, exactly. I can see myself from different directions, which is always fun. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, good to be here today. Excited to be here with a tremendous group of people, some of whom I know, some of them I, I know a little less, but I definitely heard of. So I'm super excited to hear of the projects. Uh, that they uh, present. Um, so my name is Elena and uh, exactly I run the Crypto and Digital Art Fair. Uh, the next edition of the fair is going to be in June coming up already June 17th to June 23rd online uh, and in person something else called Digital Art Month in Paris if any of you are uh, in Paris but we can speak about this later. So I guess as we have such a uh, extensive group of people here, we will start with the round of introductions. Um, so maybe I would ask everybody to share a few words about yourself, about your project, and then um, maybe also um, to speak about the NFT project that you are particularly excited at this moment and share why you think is important. I think we'll start with that, and then we'll go into uh, any other uh, questions that you might have, uh, and also maybe questions from the audience, uh, if we have enough time left. So I think I will start with um, Krista as ladies first, and then uh, we'll go to the next uh, speaker. Hi, Krista. Hi, thank you so much, Startup Village. I'm so Happy and honored to be here and to, to speak to the NFT community at large around the world in Moscow. It's fantastic. Um, well, I'm, I'm basically an NFT artist. I've been a digital artist since 2013. And um, I basically became an NFT artist very recently, <clears throat> since last February when I was uh, whitelisted in Super Rare. And I am the creator of the Mars House, which is the first NFT digital house uh, that was sold uh, in the world. And uh, we did make a record sale at the time for 288 ETH. Uh, but since then, the record has been broken. But at the time, it was quite exciting because such a new space. Um, I'm really interested in the next generation of NFTs for augmented reality, that is 3D digital um, assets. And that is what Mars House is about. It's about the next generation augmented reality metaverse house. Thank you. Amazing. Yeah, it's a great project, a very futuristic and wonderful project. I invite you all to check it out. All right. So the next one on my screen, I'll just go by that. Uh, Alexei. Hi, Alexei. Can you tell us about your project and what excites you in the NFT world today, I guess? Yeah. Hi. <clears throat> my name is Alexei Fallin. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Rarible. Variable is the largest, one of the largest marketplaces, NFT marketplaces. So Variable is the probably the only community-owned marketplace. So we have our governance model, and um, yeah, um, happy to be here. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Alexei. Garbert, do you want to jump in? Yeah. Uh, да, спасибо. Можно я 
Yes, thank you. I'll speak in Russian. Thank you. I'm really glad to welcome you all. My name is Herbert. I'm responsible for blockchain technology, and I've been doing it for four years. I use it for business, for public sector. It happened that my first NFT I purchased a year ago. It was probably even on this day I bought this NFT. It was based on Rarible platform. Alexei, hello. Back then we learned about your platform and we started using it we had a few ideas we had a small community but after we purchased it I had an idea I realized that I couldn't just have this on NFT shells we need to demonstrate it so now we have digital art expo this is a platform to demonstrate digital art and you can use different interiors business interiors or private interiors and with the hype that we saw in the beginning of this year, we started to provide consultations in NFT sectors. We work professionally with artists, with collectionists, with galleries, investors. We in initiated the first exhibition here in Russia in April. It was an online exhibition. We had 5,000 participants and we exhibited more than 60 arts. So everyone could purchase this NFT at this exhibition and we actually sold six or seven products and then we sold more. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds amazing. Uh, we'll dive into the project a little later if we have some time. And now let's go to Vlad. Hi, Vlad. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Thank you so much for having me. Hello, it's really a pleasure to be here. CEO and co-founder at Block Party. Uh, Block Party was founded in 2017 with the idea that NFTs uh, could be event tickets. And um, we were able to use NFTs for um, ticketing in the world of uh, sports and music, uh, art fairs uh, with uh, Kadaf and we, um, we learned a lot about NFTs throughout that time, but became most inspired by the artists we saw working with NFTs and, um, and the need for NFTs by the art industry was not for access control to art fairs, but for, um, but for a medium for artists. So in 2019, we expanded our strategy to NFTs for artists, for um, musicians, for uh, creatives. And today we're very proud to have uh, one of the few NFT marketplaces that are blockchain agnostic. So we're um, able to mint on multiple blockchains. We're able to accept credit card for uh, transaction. Uh, and we're really able, and our mission is to give creators the most possible optionality and tools when they're minting their NFTs, be it uh, their own website, be it their own storefront. Uh, maybe the artist um, prefers to do our flexible minting option. Maybe they prefer to do uh, whatever blockchain they want. In any event, um, it's about accessibility and it's about supporting artists. So we're happy to be in our fourth year of work in NFTs and very happy to be continuing our mission of making NFTs accessible to the mainstream audience. Amazing. Thank you so much. All right, um, let's go to Daria. Привет, Daria. Uh, hi, everyone. I will speak hi. English by this uh, time. Awesome. So uh, I'm, I represent Gaston Bank. I represent uh, the Innovations Union. Uh, I'm here in Skolko now, and our stage is behind ah. me. So cool. we can see us there. Uh, and this is our uh, first uh, vlog, uh, which we created with uh, an artist. So yesterday we... Um, uh, put uh, our uh, art in digital form, so we created an affair uh, between Gazprom Bank and uh, artists who called Liberty, and I will uh, represent uh, our work uh, in uh, um, I, my future uh, work. Uh, so uh, we create uh, our Gazprom Bank art collection. Uh, it is uh, known for all the world. Uh, and um, uh, we create some works with artists and some works we buy. Uh, so we are in the art uh, market. Uh, we like to work with artists. Uh, and I will show you the uh, cases that we have now. Thank you. 
Well, that's amazing that Gazprom Bank uh, is buying digital art and NFTs. Sounds very inspiring. Yeah. And, uh, you can go to Rival platform and uh, find there our work. Wow, <laughs> amazing. Yeah, I'd love to see that. If you guys can share after the discussion, that, that sounds pretty cool. Um, awesome. Okay, so now we have Natalia in line. Natalia doesn't have her camera on, uh, but... Um, Natalia, are you there? Maybe we'll come back to Natalia then later and now go to Brick Spacer. No, Natalia, awesome. Okay, so then let's go to Brick Spacer. Hello, guys. Uh, uh, hi. Uh, Unfortunately, I'll speak Russian because I really learned about NFT, but I don't know English. So in February and January, it was my first time I sold my NFT. It was dedicated to Alexei Navalny, and this is where our NFT community started. Because I talked about it for eight hours using Clubhouse, then I created NFT Busters channel, and after this, artists in Russia, they realize that it is possible to make profit using NFT and you can work in your studio and you can make money with this. So now I have an agency, it is called NFT Art. This is my partner Maxim, he will talk about it. We work with artists and you'll tell about it. Well, a few months ago, together with um, my partner, we created the first agency in CS, which is focused on NFT. It's called Art. So our concept is quite simple because we support the full production in NFT for big brands, for big companies, and for media artists. And our main goal is to create the best platform to have the best product and to bring something new. So if you need after this lecture to post your NFT where you want to work with art collectionists, we will help you because we have connections. It sounds really great. Um, so, I mean, did I cover, I think I covered the, all of the speakers that are on stage right now. Um, I think all of the projects sound quite amazing. So, uh, my next question is actually about the importance of NFTs and in particular the importance of NFTs for the art market. As I am coming myself from a more traditional art market, I'm always asking myself uh, this question, why, I mean, I have a few answers but, uh, uh, that are obvious, but I'm always curious to hear more uh, ideas. Why do you think the NFTs are important uh, for the more traditional art market? And if you think that they're here to stay. So I guess um, uh, that's one of the questions that maybe a lot of people have. So let's try to, uh, answer that. Krista, do you want to start? Yes, yeah, so I thank you. I, I think that uh, NFTs, especially for artists, is, uh, is a wonderful uh, movement toward more sovereignty over the artists' careers. I believe that these platforms uh, give access uh, to the collector's eyes, so there's direct contact between the artist and the collectors. And of course, um, you know, since you are uh, having direct contact, that means that you can create uh, incredible social initiatives to the NFTs. Uh, percentages of the NFTs can be uh, donated toward uh, worthy causes in the world. Uh, for example, for the Mars House, when we sold it, the majority of the proceeds went to the uh, Continuum Foundation, which I founded uh, to support uh, meditative healing sound and light installations around the world, public installations. And quite frankly, this initiative would not have been possible if it weren't for the NFT system and the way it's structured. And of course you have royalty sales. Royalty sales are around 10% on super rare for resale market, which is a, a fair proposition for all the hard work that we do uh, to, to boost our careers and, and to create a positive change in the world. So 
I think overall for the artist side, I, I think that it's a wonderful, positive opportunity, and uh, I believe it is here to stay. No, absolutely, and I couldn't agree more uh, about the royalties. So I'm curious about your platform, Alexei. Can you tell us what you think um, about NFTs? It's important to the art world, and also if you can share what you currently have uh, as a uh, royalty structure and how you came up with it. Mm, yeah, sure. So <clears throat> first of all, I would say that NFT is a great technology that allows you to um, create unique digital uh, content. So you now, it's like the first time you can own your content in the internet. And especially for artists, it's really important because it's like video and uh, audio and uh, images. So for uh, painters, it's just images. Yeah, it's a it's, uh, unique um, possibility to have your content uh, in the in the internet and also yeah sure you can have some mm, very sophisticated mechanism around payments uh, so such as royalties but it could be even more complex actually so right now on Rarible you can set up your royalty for any NFT it it actually Rarible supports like any amount of commission so it could be from zero to 100%. And there is a precedent when uh, people sell like uh, sell NFTs with 100% commission. So it effectively means that NFT change, changes the owner, but uh, all the money uh, will go to the artist. <laughs> mm, so even this is possible. Yeah. And also, uh, Recently, we launched Rarible Protocol, and uh, Rarible itself is moving to this protocol. And after this, it will be able to have like a set of commissions. Uh, it it could be useful if you um, create an NFT was in in a collaboration with someone, so you can split commission between like several um, several people. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's super cool. So if I understand correctly, as an artist, you actually determine the royalty that you want to put into the... Yeah, yeah that's in, not... the, in the event of minting, you can set up your royalty. Okay, uh, quite interesting. Great, I mean, sounds great. If you also can think, uh, maybe as a follow-up question to that, we'll go to Gerbert, of course, but um, what do you think, um, what kind of royalty is the most efficient or so to say most productive so like um, um what works best is there a like, magic number or something like that mm -hmm. yeah i got i got your question so i would say that industry standard currently it's somewhere uh, between like 10 to 20 percent okay. somewhere here amazing sounds cool herbert your turn <laughs> Да, да, вопрос отличный. Смотрите, NFT, в принципе, он действительно дал большую возможность. Yeah, that's a wonderful question. Indeed, NFT has provided a lot of opportunities to artists, to young artists or beginning beginners. And that's an instrument uh, that enables you to embrace the whole world due to its creativity, due to its community, to reach um, the uh, collectioners immediately. And that's the huge advantage. And now we can see talented people who didn't deal with art, maybe they were designers, they were involved with design, but they are talented and very creative. They can self-actualize in this sphere. We have seen examples of very successful people who became very popular. And uh, now they launch their own collections, and they are not limited in terms of uh, their location, in terms of geography. So. We, what is very transparent due to blockchain is the provenance, what requires time and effort and money, and it doesn't 
uh, it is not really reliable for the uh, collectioners. They need to communicate, they need to make requests, and here in this case, we can keep track of the uh, masterpiece of the art in terms of creation, selling, reselling, and ownership, of course, which is cool. Uh, so it's very uh, beautiful that we can see uh, the history. I, as collector, I'm very happy. I would like to add another two factors. This is a emergent market uh, beginning to shape, and we are lacking in platforms for uh, resale for the secondary market, and we are developing such mechanisms right now. I hope that all these uh, pieces involved will have this in terms of galleries, royalties, uh, collectors, and so on. Uh, it seemed to us that it's so transparent that it's a direct way to the collectors, but it's not like that. Exactly, because the most prominent modern artists that are globally acknowledged uh, who uh, were not known by the crypto community are not in demand. So we need to bring together the physical modern art and perhaps the uh, the phenomenon we got when we saw a huge number of talented and gifted artists. Yes, I totally agree with you. This is the question, uh, the issue that we are trying to address at our fair. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Let's go to you. Thank you, Elena. <clears throat> I think uh, the others have given really good uh, points of view from uh, the platform side, from the artist side, from the collector side. And um, I might offer why I think NFTs are here to stay from a little bit of my experience as an art dealer prior to, uh, uh, Elena, as you know, prior to entering the blockchain space professionally, uh, I did spend about 10 years as a fine art dealer um, in New York. And while um, I came at that more so from a finance point of view, uh, over time, you just learn art history and you learn the work, the work that, um, that artists do and how they, and how they create it. So the first time that I saw an artist, um, using their digital art and pushing it into an NFT medium. And I was at the time only thinking about NFTs as tickets. Uh, this was the early part of 2018. Um, I was, my, my mind started working and my, and my interest was peaked, but not from a blockchain perspective, but from an art history perspective. Um, in that moment, I was reminded of, uh, of photographers who fought for decades to be taken seriously as fine artists. Today, in 2021, we don't think twice when we see photography in a museum uh, or a fine art gallery, but, you know, it wasn't really until... Um, some point in the late sixties that I was considered anything more than, um, than, than journalism. And so, whereas photographers had, by the way, a digital medium, um, you can argue, but whereas photographers have the luxury of using the print and, you know, let's make sure that we think about photographers and printmakers as not always the same person. Um, photographers have the luxury of using a print and that is a familiar thing to collectors. It's, it's a two dimensional, productization of the art that can be framed and hung on the wall. And so with time, uh, we began to recognize the photographers as um, serious digital artists. Um, and this has happened, and, and, and this happens with every wave of contemporary art where uh, experimental art um, stands the test of time. So when I saw um, the artists working with NFTs, I realized, you know, I've seen digital art in, in museums. I've seen digital art in galleries. Um, you know, Andy Warhol's digital art is going to be sold at Christie's. Um, but prior to Andy Warhol, Salvador Dali was experimenting with digital art. Digital art has been around since digital. And so it's just not really been collected. And suddenly you have this, this technology that guarantees ownership and guarantees collectability. I get asked all the time as an art dealer, what should I invest in? What should I invest in? What kind of art should I invest in? And like, there's no answer to that question that doesn't begin 
or end with the word collectorship. So when I, when I see NFTs from the platform side, from the artist side, from the collector side, from the art market side, I'm seeing finally the answer to the flourishing of digital art, which is we can now have a culture of collectorship. And that to me is um, proof positive that NFTs are here to stay. Um, certainly digital art does not need NFTs to validate the art form. It's been around for decades, but certainly um, it has, NFTs have offered the digital art world uh, a culture of collectorship and, you know, digital art's been around for the last 50 years, 60 years. I can pretty safely guarantee you digital arts can be around for the next 60 years. So uh, to that end, I'm reasonably certain NFTs are here to stay. Amazing. Yeah, you got me thinking for a second, what was the digital work by Salvador Dali? <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, um, I, I put a client's painting into the retrospective at the Centre Pompidou in uh, 2013 or 14. And there was this whole room that was um, devoted to a work that Dolly did. It was a video work. So I'm, count I'm counting video uh, art as of digital. Course. Yeah. And um, it was like this, it, it, was, it was very surreal. Well, obviously it was very surreal, but it was like, um, it was like this like big set of lips with a checkerboard floor. And, you, you know, and um, I mean, he was, uh, he, um, so first of all, you know, there's a whole like video installation from works that he did with video, but actually the client's painting that I put into the, uh, into the show was his auto portrait from 1972, uh, which uh, was a mixed media work. Uh, when I say mixed media, I mean, he, he like painted on eggshells to the, to the, to the canvas, but also he took a photograph from Philip Halsman. Uh, he took Philip Halsman's portrait of Marilyn Monroe and Philip Halsman's portrait of uh, Mao Zedong. And he superimposed Marilyn Monroe's face onto Mao Zedong's head and put that onto the canvas. And um, in his writings, he said, well, that's probably what God looks like, the commercial yeah. ability of the West and, um, and, the strength and, uh, and the strength of authoritarianship in the East. And that, that's probably God. And then he called it auto portrait because he saw Verdi Dali, but um, but you know using but superimposing one photograph and another photograph is a digital process. So uh, you know again, artists artists have been in the digital realm for longer than we realize, mm -hmm. and uh, they will continue to be in that realm. Yeah, that's fascinating, um, Daria. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the importance of NFTs? Yes, of course. Uh, sorry for my glasses. It is very sunny here in Kosovo. I will uh, switch to Russian um, because they represent Russian bank. Uh, so, so, I would like to share why the corporation is here and why we found interest in it. I would like to begin with the fact that Edgar Degas once said that art is not what you can see, but what you want to uh, convey to other people, so to large in, in, uh, corporations. It's so crucial to have different channels of communication to establish better uh, rapport with our clients and customers. It's very important to drive the point home sometimes, the uh, eco uh, ecological behavior and ecological communication that we foster among uh, our clients and corporate partners, I believe that art is something that helps us to drive the point home uh, by playing, by using art in a creative manner. So uh, many people are playing this, uh, playing with the NFT because it's a brilliant opportunity to share their ideas, to share their point of view with others. And we know that a lot of communities uh, wrapped around the NFT, communities of investors, collectors, artists. So it's important to uh, 
to embrace uh, all these trends in our company with the help of digital artists and NFT. We issued a token. This brick symbolizes the token. It is made of plastic cards, um, debris, uh, pieces of plastic cards, and that symbolizes that uh, NFT is a digital token symbolizing a work of art. So, to my mind, this is a wonderful story, the wonderful message about recycling, sustainability, and our approach to plastic and waste management. And uh, to our mind, uh, plastic is a work of art, too. Brick spacer. A brick spacer, let me address you as a pair. If, uh, if, I, if I can, uh, do you think that NFT will stay with us for a long time? And why do you think they are important for artists and for the community? We, we are on our own, we are not a couple. Uh, well, a cryptocurrency uh, grew in 2017, it was in demand, then it uh, went down, and then it skyrocketed again. But still, that's just a technology that is widely used. It has to do with something that helps people uh, to create something absolutely new. And if he just enables a person to um, fix the ownership of a work of art, and that will not, uh, that will linger for a long time, that will not vanish. So I see that the interest to NFT is declining gradually, whereas um, in Russia it's growing, I can see that. I know a lot of people, authors of NFT projects, they will produce something and they will be bought. And the majority of artists or guys who, uh, who wanted just to, to earn some money, uh, they will... Uh, they will disappear and the NFT will remain with us, I think, remain as a technology, as an instrument. I think that NFT will stay with us for a long time because, globally speaking, that's a totally new spiral for modern art globally because this is a technology that helps to confirm ownership through blockchain technology and create real crypto art with uh, uh, definite attributes like ownership, the technology, the date, the sell, sale and resale. Those who do uh, digitalization, who digitalize their works a lot with the help of blockchain technology or N NFT, uh, will use that because uh, that will kind of immortalize the work of art. <coughs> Real works of art can be damaged or destroyed. Yes, indeed, sometime, uh, sometime later, uh, works of art will be destroyed. If this is a physical canvas, and uh, the, there is an idea that such works of art will be reprinted and verified by NFT technology. Maybe my last question that I ask, I see that there are quite a few uh, questions from the audience, but maybe just a very quick uh, last question from me is about collectors, actually. So I'm wondering, uh, from your experience, who are the collectors of uh, crypto and digital art? How are they different from, uh, say, traditional digital art collectors? Uh, are there any intersections between traditional and uh, uh, crypto art collectors and so on? Um, so just a few words, I think, could be great. And we can go into the same order or jump in whoever wants. Maybe, uh, Christy, if you'd like to start, and then we can go ahead. Sure. Well, from my uh, from my uh, 
experience uh, just from my own collectors, I can say that they're mostly people who are invested in cryptocurrencies and are involved in the crypto revolution. So I would say that it's a very sort of um, crypto punk, uh, you know, crypto punk uh, uh, conversation, you know, just visually and culturally, I find. Uh, so, yeah, I think um, right now, you find a lot of uh, collectors who are just heavily invested in Ethereum and Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And uh, I think the NFTs is just an extension of, you know, investment strategy for, for a lot of these collectors uh, who are comfortable with uh, the crypto space. Um, but I, I also wanted to mention that, uh, uh, I forgot to mention that Mars House is now um, available uh, in virtual reality as an experience on spatial platform and we're going to have tours people can actually put their oculus on and visit the mars house i forgot to mention that earlier so uh we're having all of that programming in june so please stay tuned um on my instagram and my twitter thank you that's amazing alexei alexei we cannot hear you oh yeah sorry so uh Right now, uh, it's really hard to buy an NFT with credit card, actually. And uh, soon it will be able, I guess, major NFT platforms, they are working on this right now, as well as Rarible uh, do. So soon it will be able to buy NFT with credit card, but initially, initially it's just about uh, crypto. So that's why like the first collectors and also the spaces inside the crypto space initially. So first wave of collectors, they are definitely crypto native guys with cryptocurrencies uh, from before. But uh, there is like a new wave of collectors and this wave is a different kind of people. So usually it's like high net worth individuals or same old uh, collectors from the traditional arts. Amazing. Yeah. Great. Uh, yes, indeed. The first collectors uh, were the people from the crypto world who are familiar with the technology, who know well what blockchain is. They appreciate uh, the value uh, of the artifacts. If you look at the top collectors who bought Bipla, was the crypto investor called uh, uh, Nick uh, Coven. It was Mark Cuban, a, the collector and investor from America. And in Russia, we can see uh, that the first collectors came from the crypto world. I'm um, looking forward to, and I do my best. I know that there are uh, modern art collectors who are looking for a kind of full house that's not just a collection they gathered 20 years ago and that's it but digital art is a new wave and that should be in their collection so the top uh, works of art masterpieces um, will be hunted by such inv uh, such investors and collectors as for the uh, buying mechanism, I believe that it should be possible for a collector to take a look at the work of art and buy it and uh, obtain ownership of the NFT. I'm sure they will crystallize very soon. We have such art collectionists, we have a few art collectionists, they asked me to help them to buy NFT and they were so happy with their purchases, especially they liked the process how to choose NFT, it was based on foundation platform. But when we talk about cryptocurrencies and what is valued, they sometimes are really cautious because it is really expensive. But if it's about $2,000, $10,000, they're very glad to buy it. They have some difficulties with cryptocurrencies. But if they like and want, they can purchase it. It's okay. So we are developing really fast. 
and we feel that these people who are 45 or older, they enter this market. It is amazing, but after an Olga, do you want to present yourself? Because you joined us recently? Well, sure. I'm colleague of Yelena. I'm a founder of the fair and I'm working with NFT. We are one of the first and one of the first who started working with the art and cryptocurrencies and I'm developing this community. I have lots of artists who participate and art collectionists, so I offer them opportunities to develop, to promote their work. I organize different events to them to increase their value here in Russia. So we'll be glad if you participate. <laughs> Great. Super. <laughs> Super. Um, all right. I think. Um, um, do you guys want to to add something to the question about collectors, Vlad? Uh, sure. I'll. Uh, sure. I'll say that um, since we started selling NFT tickets there's been a total flippening, let's say. In 2018, we would be selling tickets to crypto conferences. We would see approximately three or 4% of all sales paid in crypto. Um, even for crypto conferences, we were, you know, it was really credit card heavy. With uh, NFTs now, total opposite. You, you know, we've been offering uh, credit card payments on block parties since August we're seeing maybe 10 to 15% of sales in credit card. Now in 2021, in May, uh, that number is growing higher and we're able to analyze data by price point. As many of the folks um, on this panel have pointed out, the high price items are typically in cryptocurrency, whereas um, the 150 to $300 price point is very largely um, credit cards. We are not seeing a correlation of uh, market prices uh, being impacted. So crypto has been in the toilet for the last couple of days, but we haven't really seen um, to, we may be seeing a lesser volume, but the price points have stayed um, stable. And, uh, but we are seeing the credit card numbers tick up a little bit here and there. Um, with the more expensive items, uh, you know, I think that you have internet native and crypto native people supporting their own culture, just like, you know, as a collector, if I'm buying contemporary art, I'm probably not spending too much money on old masters and vice versa. So with, um, you know, sort of the, the, the newer crypto art, it is being supported by crypto people. But what's interesting is internet archaeology. Right. So some of these things like Nyan Cat, Charlie Bit My Finger, you know, some of like the Internet memes are being treated as Internet archaeology. Uh, today on Block Party, we'll be selling the original uh, negative for, um, well, the original file for the second most liked photo on Instagram ever. And we expect that we'll have bidding, you know, the way our data shows what, what happens. We expect that we'll see bidding up to 15,000 or so, maybe even cash. But then if once we get uh, higher than that, um, certainly we're expecting Ethereum payments. All right. Sounds good, Daria and Brick and Spacer. Two seconds, I had issues with the sound. I wanted to outline from the corporate point of view because it's a little bit different. We are a legal entity and we wanted to have an opportunity to purchase NFT as part of our collection and to support artists. But we do understand that we are a corporation. We work within legal framework in Russia, and it's not really transparent because cryptocurrency, they are not described in our legislation correctly. So for us, it's kind of difficult to collect NFTs. So if you have any ideas how to work on this, I feel that it will be very valuable for the market. 
maybe we are as a bank will have our own agenda now we collect nft they are left with artists they are in their wallets they are not the product that can be sold but still these artists they are owners still and if you go to their web pages they can see that there is a collaboration with our bank it is a good approach in the beginning but we feel that we will develop this theme and if you can suggest how corporations can legally accept this NFT art. I feel that it will be interesting. We are one of the first, but not the last, who are interested in this market in Russia. And uh, this is a very trendy market. It will be growing. It will be more and more popular. It is a hype around this market. More and more people will join. So let's see how we can be in this market, how it can be legitimate, approved by legal status. Definitely running out of time, but uh, Brick and Spacer, uh, anything you want to add? Well, first of all, I would like to repeat that unfortunately I'm the only one from Brick Spacer. Yes, excuse us. Yes, we have some issues how to collect art because we don't have special tools that can be conveniently displayed, but I hope that next year we'll have infrastructure so normal people, they can buy this and they can download NFTs and there will be no questions, so I have nothing to it. Well, we believe in this market, in the future of NFT, that generally it is a new promising market and we feel there are so many aspects and there is a great potential. And the key aspect, we have lots of artists, lots of art collectionists, and they prove that it is interesting for them. So we cannot stop this movement now. Well, great. We are wrapping up, I think. Uh, maybe I, I see there are tons of questions from the audience. Uh, one question that I see is repeating, uh, artists are worried about their works being stolen. So, uh, I mean, it's a valid concern for any digital artist, I think, working with the uh, internet. So, I mean, if you guys can maybe share um, your thoughts on that, anyone can uh, jump in, whoever has any thoughts. Uh, Two seconds, please. We had one case recently. I communicate a lot with artists. We are friends, and some of them, they are afraid of it because they could not understand that these are traditional artists. So recently I had a case when artists uh, well, somebody took screens, shots of their art, and it was so difficult to prove that it was her work, but she published it on the internet, so nobody really uh, wanted to support her. Well, I would like to have um, his contact. Well, you shouldn't buy this product if you have some concerns about this product. But I feel that we have different platforms, they are mediators, and they should verify this product as banks do. This is my personal opinion, and I want to share my opinion, because this art, it should be protected, and I feel that somebody should be responsible for it. And I'm an art collectionist, I don't want to go through internet. I don't want to try to find information whether it is the art from one artist or another one. I would like to add some comments. Yes, there are some methods how you can verify this product. And our platform was always the one that was open. So everyone can come here and create their NFT, but to be visible and to be part of the auction, you can do it only if you are verified. So it depends on the data that is used. Um, Many years ago, it was kind of the same, but now we have verification. Yes, the market is growing, it's developing, it is great that we have verification, we can avoid such cases. It is so great, and I feel that the platforms that will emerge soon, they should have such tools for verification. 
time to part, unfortunately. It's such a great discussion. We have so many speakers. I feel really bad that we have to wrap up, but we have to. We just have to do it again very, very soon. I would like to thank everyone for coming, for sharing your thoughts about NFTs. I 100% agree. NFTs are here with us to stay. I believe in the market, believe in the artists. So if I, you are a young artist working with any kind of art, jump into NFTs. It's going to be fun. And you have great specialists here who are ready and more than that to help. So just address all of, all of us here. We are here to help. It's a very, very friendly market. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, Elena. Uh, that was yeah. a really wonderful moderating. and It was a pleasure to be part of it. Спасибо всем. Спасибо, спасибо.